All right, so this is my setup for countersinking the flap um, filler panel. What I have here is just a, a three-quarter inch piece of scrap wood that I put a hole or a, a recess in. And that just gives the guide pin of the countersink on the microstop um, clearance to go down into. I've got the table of the drill press pushed back. You put your wood in place. Here's the panel. This is again, this is the flap um, filler panel. Um, this edge here is the bottom skin edge. This edge is the edge that attaches to the rear spar of the wing. You want to make sure that you countersink this top of the skin side. On this side back here, this is where the piano hinge goes. So this needs to remain flat. That's why you countersink this side. This is where the bottom skin sits. You have to countersink these holes deep enough so that the dimple in the skin will nest nicely. And then again, this side, this side here stays flat for the piano hinge to mount to. So at this point, it's just a matter of getting your countersink depth set, position the hole over the recess like this, and then you can run your micro stop down into it. And then of course you could see the way that this is positioned. The brace hangs over the edge of the table here without interference. So again, you just put the hole in your recess, bring down your counter stop, make your counter sink, and then you can just truck right along and get them all set. All right, so here I am fitting the aileron to the right wing. And as always, before I get too deep into it, I want to take a moment to um, make this video clip and cover some of the things that I think are important to consider. The first thing is, before you put the aileron on and do any of your alignment, jigging and rigging, anything like that, check to make sure that these brackets, these aileron attach brackets, are straight. These two are not bad. Um, this one's got a little bit of a curve to it and I think it's just from uh, the stamping process when the part was actually formed. They get a little bit of a curve to them. I noticed it before I even riveted these together when I was doing the, the edge cleanup and the deburring they looked a little curved. But I left them because I'm not, it was very, very minor. This one over here is the same way. It's got a little bit of a curve to it, but it's not that bad. But what's most important is to take a uh, sight down the brackets and the rest of the wing. Because on my left wing, this rib looked really good. And this bracket ended up kind of shooting out this way. It was quite noticeable, um, but you obviously you want this to be, you know, a relatively straight line. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you've got 90 degree angles in here and whatnot that are all bolted or riveted together. But if the bracket itself is a little off or if the holes were match drilled a little off or if they were a little off from the factory, whatever the case may be, this might be kicked out a little bit. And you want to make sure that it runs true down the length of when you sight down the length of the wing. Like I said, this one, this one um, on both wings, this wing and the other wing, it came out pretty nice. Of course, it's got two angle brackets that it's sandwiched between, so the chances of it ended up being off are probably pretty slim. But like I said, this one here on the other wing, I had to straighten it out. What I ended up doing was I took uh, a really big pair of channel lock pliers, put a rag, uh, doubled up a rag, and put it over the part and grabbed it and just used the leverage of the handle to kind of gently work it back over so it was straight. This one seems to be okay. Once that is done, when you're happy with the way your brackets are in alignment, then you can go ahead and as per the instructions, you use this tooling hole 
and this tooling hole, the center of those tooling holes to get your straight edge to cross those center holes, these, um, let me start over, these, um, oh, what did I just call these? Tooling holes. These are your alignment holes. So if you go center line to center line and continue it out beyond the end of the aileron, that is your aileron neutral position. You line up the trailing edge, the center line of the trailing edge with your reference. So all I use is a piece of wood, make sure that the wood is straight. And then I went ahead and I marked a line across the center line of the tooling hole, marked a line across the center line of the tooling hole just for laughs. I marked a line across the entire rib, brought my piece of wood up to it, got it in alignment with my marks. As you can see, I C clamped it. I protected, um, or I, I put this spacer here, this is an eighth inch piece of plywood over top of the rivets that hold this bracket in place back here. And that allows this board to come out a little bit and clear this bracket so the aileron could move up and down for adjustment. And then it's, of course, it's attached directly to the rib here. And I've just got some backing material on the other side to prevent the C-clamp from digging into the rib. So now that I've got my alignment reference on or in place, I put the aileron on and the first thing that I like to do after I get it installed, I look at this gap right here. This is probably going to end up being blurry. The gap between the aileron and the heavy 90 degree angle bracket. That gap right there, the gap on both ends in that same location between the aileron and the 90 degree angle, your center bracket, the aileron and this 90 degree bracket right here, this gap here. I try to get those even. Um, you manipulate your washers to get that space even. Now with this center bracket here, you've got all this play in here. So what I like to do is to set this hinge point using the washers first. Because there's, no, there's not enough room in here for spacers, so you just use washers to get this gap here and this gap here the same. Once you do that, you can temporarily lock this down. Obviously this is not an aircraft nut. This is just a temporary nut because I don't want to keep using my aircraft uh, nylon lock nuts and wearing them out before I even fly the airplane. So I've got the washers in here. I've got it bolted tight. This gap and this gap are now even. Again, it's between, it's not between the aileron and the bracket, it's between the aileron and the 90 degree bracket right here. Those gaps are now even. Since that bolt is now bolted down and secure with the washers, this side here is not going to move. So now I can go ahead and put washers in here and make my spacer and the aileron will be centered between the brackets. Now that that's done, I can go ahead and start lining up my trailing edge reference cord line, if you will, with the end of the aileron trailing edge. And that's going to be hard to videotape, but hopefully you can kind of get the idea that the trailing edge is perfectly in alignment with my straight edge here. This support brace here is not playing any role at the moment, it's just a backup. What I normally will do is I rest, let me back up here a little bit, I rest the aileron on this, I just kind of adjust this to get it close here. I like to have this high when it's supported with this stand. And then I will take a wood block, as you see here, and put it between the spar and inside 
of this bracket so it rests against this bolt head on the inside. With this being long, it holds the end of the aileron up high. And little at a time, it's just trial and error, I'll cut this block shorter and shorter and shorter until when it's, when the aileron is nested, when this is up against the spar, there's, it's in between inside of this bracket here so it can't move. When it's solid, it always maintains this alignment here as you see it. Again, that's probably going to be hard to get. So that's where I am right now. I've got this cut to size so that um, you know I can come in here and move the aileron up and down. I can move this block out. I can do whatever I want to do. And I know when I come back and I put this wood back in here in the right orientation, when the aileron is laid up against it, it will automatically bring this alignment back to where it needs to be. So that's kind of where I am now. The other thing I want to make note of, I don't have the bottom skins on. Of course, this is the bottom of the wing because it's upside down. What I'm going to do now, since I have my alignment piece of wood here, C-clamped where it needs to be and it's correct and it's stationary. I'm going to go ahead and put these skins on. I don't need access in here anymore for these C-clamps. I'm going to go ahead and put this skin on. I'm going to put the other skin on. I'm not going to go crazy with the Clecos, but I am going to Cleco these in pretty good. And I'm also going to include some Clecos on this. So it'll be Clecoed everywhere that the skins can be within reason. Just again, just to have this wing trimmed and rigged, if you will, as if it was ready to be installed on the airplane, so to speak. Again, that way everything is nice and rigid and held in place. Nothing's going to move around or shift or go askew. Especially if you're going to have an issue with this, with these brackets and you've got to tweak them a little bit. You want to make sure that you can come back and get your skins on and everything. Make sure that this corner hasn't moved or done something weird, who knows what. So that's next. I'm going to go ahead and put the skins on. I'm going to go ahead and Clico it down. I'm going to make sure, make sure everything is square and true and the way it's supposed to be. Then I'll come back. I'll double check everything with the aileron alignment. I'll go ahead and uh, make this spacer and put these washers in here and I'll make sure that, uh, that like I said that everything in through here is, is good to go so that's it I think you kind of get the idea of where I'm going with this so let me uh, get to work and I'll come back after I get some more of this completed and we'll talk some more back to the aileron so as you can see, the aileron is in place and I've got my skins now in place again. I like having the skins as the skins are, are any kind of structural type of material. I like to have as much as possible clicoed together um, just to keep everything as square and true and straight as I can get it. So I like to keep the skins on as much as I can. The aileron is in place. And let's see. So I've got, as I said before, I start with this end hinge. And I basically just take a measurement from this edge, either from the edge to the bracket or from the edge to the angle. I like to go from the edge to the angle just because these may not be perfectly straight. You know, if you measure out here, you might get a slightly different measurement than if you measure in here. But the angle, I'm pretty confident that that's not going to move, that that's a pretty, uh, a pretty good measuring point. So again, starting with this hinge, uh, you just take a measurement here, anywhere you want, I guess, but I take mine here and compare it to the middle hinge at the same location here. You want, those, you want that gap to be even between these two hinges. So in order to get that gap, 
I had to wash her as you see here. Once I had that set, then I come over and I start working on this hinge. Now, it just so happened when I got that end hinge done, when I came over here, this bracket was rubbing right up against the powder coated hinge. Wow, maybe I shouldn't drink Coke before I start filming. Anyway, um, this aluminum bracket was rubbing up against this powder coated hinge right here with no washers or anything. And I've noticed that if I tried to pull it out of the way to make room in here, it actually pushed the aileron over. And that of course is gonna screw up your gap. This hinge here would actually flex a little bit when I would try to push this over and pull this this way to open up this gap it would actually push the entire aileron over and of course this gap would get a lot bigger and the gap down there would get a lot smaller and that's not what you want so I did I have to like I said I take a big pair of channel lock pliers I pad this really well I put the channel locks on here and I ever so slightly just bent this over you can put a um, a, uh, a square along the best you can along the spar and up along this bracket to see how square this actually is and it was actually off so I did have to tweak it a little bit to get it square to the spar and then it opened up this gap really nice so I was able to go ahead and get the washers in and I've got this completely tight I've got that one completely tight I rechecked my gaps on both ends here and down there, and they didn't move. Um, they're both at 3 16 from this edge of this edge of the aileron and the angle bracket. I did take a measurement real quick between this edge and the bracket, and that was more like um, what was that? Five eighths, I believe it was. But anyway, the gap on both ends is correct. You fit your spacer in. Um, you don't want any stress on here. You don't want to pry this out just to get your spacer down in there. And you don't want it, you also don't want it too short so that you have to draw it together by tightening the bolt. You want, for lack of a better word, you, you want your powder coated bracket to be at a relaxed state and the spacer fit in the way it should. So with that said, everything is now tight. You can see I've got my support out of the way, my uh, backup support. Here's my wood block. I'm gonna see if I can pull that out without dropping the aileron. Doing this one-handed. So now my block is out and we'll just check No binding, no weird noises. So that's what you're looking for. Okay. Now just to do the recheck, I'm gonna put my block back in just as I had taken it out. So I snug it up against this bracket back here and I make sure that it's seated against the spar just like that and when I come over here this should all still be in alignment my reference edge here and the trailing edge and as you can see maybe maybe not that that is still where it needs to be so as another note you want you want these entire assemblies tight. The bolt, the bolt, the bracket, the powder coated bracket, your washers, everything should be bolted tight together. The rotation, the pivot is solely on the bearing that's inside this bracket. The bolt should not be spinning, the washers should not be spinning, everything should be clamped tight to 
the bushing that's inside here. So only the bushing does the rotation. So you could see when I move my aileron, everything moves as a unit. The bearing inside of the bracket is, is doing the rotation. And of course, that's true for all end ball end links. Same here. The bolt, the washers, the spacer, the nut, everything rotates as an assembly. Nothing should be spinning other than the bearing. So that's it. Gaps are good. No stress on the brackets. Everything is tight. It works freely. And I've got it uh, still aligned down there with my reference. So now this is set. Now I move on to putting in the aileron and I build the aileron off of, or I'm sorry, the flap. I start fitting the flap. The flap will get fitted in reference to the aileron. The aileron now is not going to be touched. It's not going to be moved around at all. Because like I said, the gaps are correct. Everything is tight. It moves freely. There will be no further adjustments done on this. As I fit the flap, I can do my adjustments to the flap only and get it in alignment with the aileron, which is now correct. So that's next. So let me get into that and uh, I'll see you in a little bit.